The Human Circulatory System Part 1 Why do we need a circulatory system, you ask? It is to ensure that the nutrients from the food we eat and the oxygen from our breathing reach all cells of the body effectively. However, if we recall our previous lessons, diffusion can also do the same. So why do we still need a circulatory system? The answer is because it gives us a much faster process. The network of blood vessels in our body is the same as channels of water spread across farms, so that all of the crops get access to water and nutrients. The human circulatory system consists of the blood, blood vessels, and heart. The valves in the blood vessels and heart prevent the backflow of the blood. This ensures that the blood which is pumped by the heart flows in one direction only, or unidirectional throughout the body. There are some types of blood circulatory systems, open system, closed, double, and single system. Now, can you guess what type of circulation is in the human circulatory system? Humans have closed and double circulatory system types. The closed system means blood surges through the body in a closed network of vessels. No blood movement into tissues or mixes with its fluid. In the case of double blood circulation, both systems are connected to the heart and divided into oxygenated and deoxygenated. Blood passes through the heart twice in one complete circulation. The blood vessels consist of arteries, arterioles, veins, venules and capillaries. When we do a cross-section of arteries and veins, we can see that both of them have common structures like an outer wall, elastic muscle, then a lumen in the middle. The differences between the two are that in arteries, the outer wall is thicker and firmer than in vein. It retains its shape when being pressured by blood flows, while having a smaller lumen. The elastic tissue of arteries is also thicker. In contrast, the walls of capillaries are very thin, only a single epithelial cell thick. This is so that substances can easily diffuse in or out of the capillaries. The lumen is also narrow and allows only a single red blood cell to pass at a time. The capillaries are so small that the red blood cells sometimes, by rearranging the proteins of their cytoskeletons, even have to alter their shapes to go through the capillary. The next video will tell more about these vessels, so make sure you watch it to get a complete picture.